Hello, 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 hello. The time has come to revisit Einstein's theory of special relativity. Relativistic Doppler shift. You ready? Walter is on this planet and Susan is on this planet. Susan's planet is moving with a speed one third the speed of light in the direction of Walter and she is transmitting frequency, electromagnetic waves, frequency F0. Walter will receive a higher frequency. We have discussed that in one of our previous problems. Walter will receive this frequency. He will receive a frequency which is 1.4142 times higher than F0. We call that blue shift. Frequency goes up and the wavelength goes down because wavelength is speed of light divided by frequency. In special relativity, the question whether Susan is moving towards Walter or Walter towards Susan is meaningless. The only thing that matters is the relative motion between the two. Let's put ourselves now in Susan's position. Susan knows Walter quite well. And she knows that Walter's heartbeat is about 1 hertz, 60 beats per minute. Believe me, trust me, I measure it very often. So my heartbeat is 1 hertz. And it just so happens that every time that my heart beats, I send a very brief radio pulse to Susan. What will she receive? She will receive that the frequency of my heart is 1.4142 hertz. You see the symmetry in the problem? So if she sees my heart beating faster than Walter knows it beats and that Susan who knows Walter also knows that his heart beats. We call it blue shift, frequency increase. If Susan thinks of Walter's heart as being a clock on his planet, namely a ticking clock once every second, she says, hey, his clock is going faster than what Walter thinks. And by symmetry, if Walter were to look at Susan's heart, he would come to the same conclusion that her heart is beating faster than he knows it should. It's not beating faster <laughs> because they are emotionally connected. It's because of relativistic Doppler shift. Now comes my question. Susan is again moving to Walter with one third the speed of light, but not along this line. But now this angle is theta. And the question now is, if theta is 30 degrees, what is the frequency that Walter will receive? And then independently, a second question, what is the frequency that Walter will receive if the angle is 90 degrees? Some of you may think that you can write down the answer in 10 seconds. If you think that, and if you do that, there is a 99.99999% chance that your answers are wrong. That they are both wrong. I want to teach you physics. <coughs> I want you to spend some time. Maybe it takes half an hour to go to the web and learn about relativistic Doppler shift. If you learn enough, you will be able to answer my two questions. You will be able to give me the correct answers. That's not cheating. In fact, that's what I want you to do. 
If you don't spend that time on special relativity, then it's, it's virtually certain that your answers will be wrong. And the reason is that relativistic Doppler shift is not a classical idea. Yes, there is one component which is classical, but there is one other component which is special relativity. And that's what we call time dilation. Let's revisit the equation that I wrote down earlier. Look at this equation. We never derived that. It has one classical component, which is easy to see. Suppose Susan sends to Walter a frequency of 10 to the 14 hertz electromagnetic radiation. I think that's visible light. And she transmits it for one second. Then she has transmitted 10 to the 14 wavelengths. And they're all moving towards Walter with the speed of light. So these 10 to the 14 wavelengths are spread out over a distance of 300,000 kilometers. But in that one second, Susan has moved 100,000 kilometers in the direction of Walter. Therefore, those 10 to the 14 wavelengths are not spread out over 300,000 kilometers, but over 200,000 kilometers. And that is a classic, classical argument, which is perfectly valid, but it is not enough, it's not sufficient. That argument alone will give you a blue shift. And that argument alone will, will tell you then that F is 1 over this, is 1 over 1 minus beta, no square root, 1 over 1 minus beta times F0. And that will give you a factor 1.5. 3 over 2. Now comes the second part that has to be put in that relationship. And that is the time dilation. If Walter looks at Susan's clocks on her planet, all these clocks go slower by a factor gamma, that's time dilation. If Susan looks at the clocks on Walter's planets, all the clocks on Walter planets go slower than Susan's clocks on her planets. It goes slower by the amount of gamma. That's called time dilation. If you take that now also into account, then you'll get this answer. Okay, I wish you luck, do your homework, surprise me, give me the right answers. Take care, have a nice day, and for sure, we will be friends, even if you give the wrong answer. <laughs>